everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Miller, and welcome to another episode of Oasis Bytes. Uh, as you may have noticed, we are at home, uh, quarantining ourselves, doing our best to stop the spread of COVID and flatten the curve. Uh, so you will uh, get to look at my beautiful bedroom while we talk about the Oasis Network. <laughs> Today, I'm joined by Oasis' very own Bennett. He's an engineer on the team uh, and a security researcher, uh, fantastic guy. He's going to tell us a little bit about the paradigm layer uh, and what that is, how it works, and its various components. So the previous, in the previous videos, we learned about the consensus layer. And then in the original video, we learned um, kind of at a high level that Oasis uniquely separates consensus from uh, execution and, and from runtimes. So Bennett, can you talk a little bit about that separation? Why did we do that? Uh, what's important about that design and, and how do we think it's going to benefit the network as a whole? Yeah. Um, so the, the separation of uh, smart contract execution from consensus uh, allows us to have a much more modular design. Mm -hmm. And the consensus layer actually accepts um, updated state uh, hashes, root hashes, from the paradigm layer. Mm -hmm. And there could be many paradigm uh, paradigms <laughs> running simultaneously. Yeah, in parallel. So, well. In parallel, that's why they're, they're <laughs> paradigms. <laughs> <laughs> um, these, these paradigms are independent. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is one dimension by which we can have scalability. Got it. The Separation also allows us to run paradigms that are different, and they're different and can be different in, in, in several dimensions, several different ways. So the diagram there shows a confidential paradigm, which is one of the things that we've done with a, with a reference implementation. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we can run a non-confidential -confid paradigm. That would be very similar to you know, Ethereum 1.0 one or something like that. Yeah. Um, furthermore, the paradigms can uh, evolve independently. So as new security technologies or, or scalability uh, technologies uh, mm -hmm. come to the forefront, we can uh, build new paradigms and evolve the system uh, over uh, while maintaining consensus among uh, the, the relative, uh, relative uh, you know, timing between transactions yeah. because yeah. they share a consensus layer. Got it. Um, yes, yeah, so we would in that instance, you know, we can really maintain this this public ledger. Uh, and then we can have kind of an ecosystem of paradigms that can evolve and grow, change and adapt, serve a really broad range of use cases. Um, but can but really continuously talk back to and, and refer to this this uh, this uh, public ledger, this maintained ledger. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know the the paradigms um, have various uh, configuration parameters. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the flexibility uh, that we can achieve is we can we can have paradigms that are um, not just confidential or not confidential, but also things like the uh, size of the committees, mm -hmm. uh, which which relates to how secure thing, the, the yeah. things are. Um, or uh, whether the execution nodes you know, have to satisfy some additional property. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe for business requirements, somebody might need uh, you know, the, the, the paradigm execution nodes to be you know, operated by, a, by certain companies, mm -hmm. limited. You know, so, so be a closed set uh, as opposed to an uh, open uh, system. Interesting. And so with all those different constraints, you know, whether that's committee size or hardware restrictions, um, you can essentially kind of play with this trade-off between security and performance. You know, there might be extra you know, non-network-related uh, factors or par paratime-related factors that make you think that this is more a more secure environment. I can get away with smaller committees, for example, or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, or, or inversely, if it's you know if it's very open, uh, 
you might say, hey, we want larger committees. We're willing to take a little bit of a performance hit um, because we want that extra security. Uh, and so in that sense, these paradigms are, are flexible and adaptable to a really broad range of use cases. Mm -hmm. Got it. So let's uh, take a closer look here. Um, so this diagram we saw last time, um, it shows the consensus layer at the bottom and then gives an example of a non-confidential paradigm. Um, can you talk about a little bit uh, kind of, you know, what are these various components that we're seeing here? Um, what's really required for a paradigm? Uh, and kind of in potentially like, you know, how does a transaction flow flow through a paradigm? Yeah, so uh, what's required of the paradigm is really, you know, paradigms have to implement these interfaces that, you know, talk to the talk to consensus layer and, and so forth, right? So the consensus layer helps the paradigms to elect the committees, uh, accepts the, the, the root hashes that that's being, being summarizing at the end there, mm -hmm. um, as well as accepting, of course, the transactions, proposed transactions from the client. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's sort of the general picture. And what's required inside the blue box is actually there are very few requirements, right? This, this picture shows uh, what we think of as sort of a stereotypical uh, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, of setup. Um, but if somebody were to implement uh, their own paradigm, they can do whatever they want. So here, um, what's, what, what's going on with the flow is the clients on the left are proposing transactions to be executed. Mm -hmm. And the transaction scheduler is ordering transactions that are being proposed mm -hmm. um, into batches, right? Um, and this is not very different. If you're familiar with uh, Ethereum, it's, it's very, very similar in, in many ways. Um, ex the executor is a committee of uh, compute nodes that actually execute the smart contracts. And execution of smart contracts is relative to the current state of the of the, of the uh, smart contract system, right? mm -hmm. the, the state of, the, of a particular smart contract, and the result is an updated state, as well as return values or events being emitted by the, the right. smart contract code. Yeah. Um, the merge committee is uh, merging together uh, multiple smart contract uh, execution results. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, another. Uh, dimension of scaling. Right? Earlier, we, we said we have multiple paradigms, and they can execute in parallel. That's one way of, of scaling. Another way of scaling is being able to run transactions in batches. Mm -hmm. And because of the way we're doing the merging, we can run you know, 5, 10, 50, whatever it is. It's a, it's a knob, right? Mm -hmm. um, and some number of transactions before we commit to the uh, to the consensus layer. Mm -hmm. So while we are running, even though they may be in sequence, while we're running multiple transactions in, in inside the paradigm, the consensus layer down below doesn't actually get any load at all. Right? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. we can handle m more transactions. Uh, yeah, more transactions really from many different paradigms kind of yeah. all at once because the paradigms in some sense can can configure themselves and we imagine lots of times will configure themselves to uh, to batch their tr transactions, you know, relatively largely or, or you know, of, of reasonable size. Yeah. yeah, the size of the transaction actually has a, you know, it is a security parameter too because it affects whether the paradigm um, you know what? How much work it has to do to recover from a fault uh, that would be discovered in the in the discrepancy detection uh, mechanism uh, we talked about before. Yeah, uh, discrepancy detection is at the is done at the interface between the consensus layer and the paradigm layer. So the merge committee members would say, "Here are the updated root hash." Mm -hmm. And if there's any dis discrepancy, the consensus layer is going to say, hey, you know, you guys better figure it out. There's something wrong here. And so 
because it is a summary of many transactions, the recovery process, this, the slow path, is to figure out what's wrong. And, it, it, and if it's a huge batch, then you know, figuring out what's wrong, re-executing perhaps, um, yeah. could be more expensive. Yeah, so again, you know, going back to that, the kind of the original point and the original kind of ethos of, of why uh, the network was designed this way is, is because we want it to be configurable for a broad range of use cases. So if someone says, you know, security is something I'm very concerned with, uh, this is a very open network, uh, you know, then in that instance, um, you know, they might opt for smaller batch sizes, expecting there to be, you know, more discrepancies found or something like that. Um, and so it's something to think about. I mean, as anyone, you know, anyone is open and, and uh, it's uh, anyone can develop their own runtime. Um, it's, it's open to anyone and connected to the Oasis network. So it's something to think about as you're developing your runtime. Um, you know, how do you want to configure it? What different parameters do you want to use? You just want to use kind of the textbook reference uh, uh, architecture that, that we've provided with the Oasis Lazy runtime, or do you want to do something uh, that you you figure out, you configure your, and set up yourself or build yourself? Um, so last but not least, we should talk a little bit about confidentiality, and we'll kind of go into it in more detail next time. Um, but this network, this diagram shows basically the same thing, um, but it adds a key manager. So Ben, can you tell us a little bit about um, why is confidentiality important? Um, you know, at a high level for a pair of time. Um, what kind of what 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 does it provide, and then what kind of confidentiality um, protocols or technology does the network support? Yeah. So confidential paradigms allows smart contracts to be written that can handle confidential confidential data. Right. So mm -hmm. um, the the previous generation blockchains handled smart contracts, but anybody can observe the, the contract state. Mm -hmm. So there can be, basically, you cannot ever uh, handle anything that might be sensitive, like medical records or, or yeah. anything that, that should not be public. Yeah. So here, uh, we have the confidential paradigm. And because of the technologies used, we can process uh, contract calls that mm -hmm. involve uh, data that should be confidential. Now, yeah. this picture has a key manager, but the key manager is only needed in a in in, in one certain class of confidential confidential paradigms. Mm -hmm. So this is um, for confidential paradigms that uh, uses the trusted execution environment or the T assumption. Mm -hmm. We can build uh, or somebody could build <laughs> uh, confidential paradigms that might use uh, fully homomorphic encryption or one mm -hmm. of these other techniques. In which case, um, you know, those kinds of uh, paradigms would be execute, would be com doing computation on encrypted data um, and uh, would never actually need to decrypt the data. It shouldn't yeah. be able to. Yeah, yeah, and so the key manager wouldn't really be needed. But again, that's, you know, and that's, that kind of, again, goes back to the original point, which is we really wanted, um, you know, the, there's a lot home, fully homomorphic encryption, ZKP, both really compelling, interesting ideas. Obviously, uh, we want to see more performance there. And, you know, probably, I think we hope to see more development on those areas. But as they become more performant and as they become more widely used, it's totally reasonable to think that uh, a, a fully homomorphic paradigm, for example, could be spun up and, and connected to the OASIS consensus layer. And that was really part of the design decision, um, making it have that kind of flexibility and, and uh, adaptability to these new, these new types of technology. Great. Um, all right, well, I think that's it. Thanks, Bennett. Uh, any like final words? <laughs> Go build a paradigm. <laughs> Go build a paradigm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you are interested in building a paradigm, um, uh, check out our documentation below. We have a lot more detail about the paradigm layer, the consensus layer, the whole network. I have it linked in the uh, in the description below. Um, you can also visit our website, oasisprotocol.org. Um, and then also go watch the next video. We're going to talk a lot about confidentiality. Um, in particular, we're going to talk about confidential runtimes that use trusted execution environments. Uh, and we're going to talk about key management, all that fun stuff, and get into kind of the nitty gritty of it. So 
Um, I encourage you to go watch that video, uh, leave comments and ask us questions. So thanks guys for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.